I could hear you. Well, uh, my Muay Thai is uh, having a chat with uh, John Walcott. Uh, it's it's good to finally, this is the first time you and I have uh, spoken. Yeah, it's good to finally talk to you. I mean, I did a lot of writing for the website in the past, and we were communicating through email, so now it's finally good to, to put a, yeah, it's, I guess, a voice to your name and a face to the name. It's clearly uh, not the same. Um, well, obviously, uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, recently saw, we're going to put it up, obviously when this video comes out, we're going to put put the video up, but we saw another trailer to your uh, documentary, and it looks amazing. Uh, All right. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of buzz and everyone's talking about it and everyone's really looking forward to seeing it. Before we jump into that, I, I, you know, I, I want to know how did you get involved in Muay Thai? What's your involvement in Muay Thai? What's your interest? What's your passion like? Uh, I got involved in Muay Thai, I think it was like late 2005, early 2006, somewhere around there. And I had a, I sustained a back injury, I had a herniated disc. And my doctor was telling me that I need to do something to strengthen up my core. Mm. So I was looking around. You know, I didn't want to go to like a regular gym and lift weights and, and all that stuff. I found that kind of boring and I never stuck with it whenever I tried it. So, uh, yeah, I came across a, a Muay Thai gym and I started training there. I mean, they, you know, it's quote unquote Muay Thai. Mm. Uh, later on, a couple years later, I found actually a, a you know, real traditional style Muay Thai gym, which is North Jersey Muay Thai. And I mean, I've been there since uh, 2007. Okay. I, I tried my hand in amateur fighting. I did that uh, once and you know, I, re I really didn't stick with it. It wasn't something that I, I could dedicate myself towards, you know, as far as like cutting weight and being disciplined enough to, to actually stick with that and, and you know, the training and everything. So uh, I didn't really take to that much. I kept going to Thailand. I kept training over there. I kept trying to learn as much as I could about the sport and about the art, technique and strategy and everything. And, and my coaches, uh, Ray Cruz and Joe Bomalag, they asked me to become an assistant coach at the gym. So I kind of uh, took on that role over the past couple of years. And I've been uh, just helping pretty much train the fighters over there. And uh, Are you doing that full time or are you, you're going to school as well, right? You're studying. Yeah, I'm going to school for English, English major. And then uh, pretty much just doing the gym thing is like a hobby. And, uh, you know, continuing with the writing with Muay Thai, the documentary. Yeah, I see that. Um... I, I see that you're often uh, back and forth in Thailand. What do you train when, when, when you're back there? The past three years, I've been going to Sang Motokart, and that's in Bangkok. That's It's about four blocks from uh, Ratchadamnan Stadium. And uh, How did you, I, I, how did you get hooked up with them? I think I saw one of the videos on YouTube, and then my coach, Ray Cruz, he actually found the website. And I put me in touch with, like, you know, he told me where to go to get in touch with them. And in uh, 2010, I went there for the first time. I stayed there for like two and a half months, and it was completely changed my life and, and changed how I look at Muay Thai. You know, I, was, I spent, in the past, I only spent about maybe like two or three weeks at a time in Thailand. Yeah. And you don't really get, I mean, you get a good idea of what, of what Muay Thai is over there. But, you know, when you're there for a long period of time and you get to travel around the country and see... You know, the kids go up to the countryside and fight and how they start there and then kind of work their way up through the rankings and then come to Bangkok. When you, when you see all that, it kind of like opens up your eyes to a different side of the sport. Yeah, I, so, I know uh, you've been doing a lot of work with the Muay Thai Preservation Project. You did a shoe drive as well right. uh, to some of the gyms. So that's, I mean, that's great work. Um, are, you, um, are, you, are you still involved in a lot of those charities? Uh, yeah, we still we're still trying to to keep it going. Right now, we just sponsor. We have one child sponsored at Crown Martial Training, and that's in Rockaway Beach. That's with uh, Chris Romulo's gym. He was a ex professional fighter here in New York. Mm -hmm. So we we pretty much pay for that child. You know, we pay for his membership to the gym every month. And as long as he's sticking with it, and we get some feedback that he's doing good in school, you know, in the community with his family, with his friends then, uh, you know, we'll keep paying for his membership. And, and we want to expand the program. We want to keep going with that. But it's, it, believe it or not, it's hard to find gyms to work with. Really? Even, or, yeah, even when we're telling them, like, look, you know, we got the money, we'll pay. Just work with us here. Help us find the kids that fit, you know, what we're looking for. That that's, uh, seems like a shame. I mean, it's such a, it's such a great uh, idea, great project. Um, well, maybe, uh, you yeah, know, we'll, we'll do a, a separate a, appeal, separate <laughs> video on that. Well, today, what I wanted to talk to you about was the, the project. What what was the motivation for, the, for this project? Was it just 
you woke up and you're like, I'm gonna do this? The the documentary? Yeah. Yeah, probably I think in two thousand nine I first had the idea. And uh, I I went to Thailand for like a month in two thousand nine. I I had a camera and I had everything ready to go. And I actually went to a couple places and I talked to some people, but it just didn't really pan out. Like it, I didn't I didn't have a map, you know, I didn't have like a plan. So uh, I, I just used that video and I put some training footage online for people to watch. You know, it was not, there was no story or nothing like that. And then uh, in 2010, when I went back, I kept I kept feeling this this need to kind of like document something about the sport. You know, yeah. I wanted to show people, and like I said, especially after that trip. Sorry about that, lost you uh, technical issues. So if, uh -huh. if I, I don't have the video editing skills that you do, so this might be a little <laughs> bit disjointed. The last thing I heard you say was um, you wanted to document something. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much of that you got, but basically in 2009, when I went to Thailand, I had the video camera and I, you know, I talked to a couple of people from different organizations, uh, you know, that worked in Muay Thai in Thailand. And I tried I had some footage of the fighters training and stuff like that at Eminent Air. And I really couldn't put a story together with what I had. I didn't have, I just didn't have all the resources and the know-how to, to put something like that together. So I used that footage and I just kind of put it online for people to watch, you know, the, uh, the fighters kicking pads and stuff like that. And then uh, in 2010, when I went back, you know, that's when the idea came back to me. It was like, you know, I felt like I felt the need to to show people that Muay Thai is bigger than just the ring sport. You know, it's kind of like there's the culture of Muay Thai, right? It's it, the culture. It's a, it's almost like the culture is the umbrella and then everything else kind of falls in, underneath that. And the uh, the ring sport is just one part of that. I mean, it's a big part, but it's only one part, you know, and I think in the West, for people that haven't been to Thailand, they only see the fights online and they don't really see the influence of the fights. Mm. You know, everything else that goes goes into making that fight happen or, you know, whether it has to do with the gambling, you know, the training, the lifestyle, all that stuff. So basically, I just wanted to show people Muay Thai outside of the ring and uh, kind of, you know, just bring that to, to the West and, and open their eyes up about that. Do you have any background with... Um, film background, editing, journalism, anything? Uh, aside from from uh, some articles that I write here and there, nothing with journalism. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like uh, and, jump in. Uh, so yeah, are you, are you I, doing all the editing yourself as well? Uh, yes. That's really yes. impressive. I mean, I, I, I mean, we talked before, but I, I took one photography class in college just to kind of get used to using my camera and stuff like that and being able to compose a shot. Because I figure if I could compose the shot, you know, I can get everything pretty much done on the back end in editing, you know, and make it look really fancy and, and put all the bells and whistles on it. But I just wanted to make sure I could actually capture the shot first. You know, that's the most important thing. Get what I could on site. Right. Uh, now, and that's how much I was worried about. You said, you know, when you went uh, initially, you didn't have a plan. So this time around, how much planning was involved? Like, obviously, we're seeing we're seeing the end product, but this is many months of planning and you know, and and getting in touch with people and chasing people down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I and I know first, you know, I I know how things work in Thailand. It's like sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> and then whether or not the person will be there on that day is another yeah. story. Yeah, I found it easy. I found it easier to just show up. So you know, I mean, I made plans with with a couple gyms. And mostly that was like the, the gyms that had foreigners working with them, you know, so it was like, you know, Kip Pone Tip with Rob, Rob Cox, we, I was able to talk to him and, and communicate with him and set something up on a specific day. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, same thing with Eminent Air, with Melissa Ray, she was there and we were talking beforehand. But for, for Pet Yin D and, and interviewing Same and, and capturing him on pads and everything, we pretty much just showed up. We're like, hey, we're and, here, uh, what's up? Uh, he was, yeah, yeah he, we talked to, I guess his manager, uh, Boat. And, you know, we told him we were going to do and he was he was cool with it. He was like, OK. And Samay just showed up and he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, you know, we're going to videotape you today and, and interview you. And, and they were, you know, he was cool about it. He didn't he didn't care. Yeah. Did you. So was it you? Um, no, actually, I think I saw this on your Facebook page. There was a couple of you guys right running around. Uh, well, there was my translator I was working with. Uh -huh. And uh, there was myself. And then in a couple of days here and there, I had my friend and fellow uh, He's a fighter from the gym, Liam Tarrant. Okay. Uh, he helped me, <clears throat> I think, on like one or two days. So I was, there was a small group. It was only about two or three of us. And then sometimes uh, the translator's friends would, would kind of tag along and see what's going on. How long from from when you landed to when you packed up? How long were you over there this time for filming, just for filming? Uh, one month. Wow. Yeah, so we tried to cram in as much as possible 
and pretty much got everything done in about like three weeks. How many hours and gigs of footage did you get? <laughs> How many hard drives did you fill up? I, I brought two with me, and I think I used about one and a half. They're both 500 gigs each. Wow. Um, so it was, it was about 600, 650, somewhere around there. What was the most challenging aspect, do you think, of, of doing this? Uh, I probably have to be, I guess, trying to get some of the ties to talk. You know, I found that the, either the fighters are very, very open and friendly or they're very, very shy. Right. So uh, I know we went to sit Mon Chai and, you know, Pornsene, he's like, a, you know, he loves being in front of the ca camera. and yeah, He's quite outgoing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So for him, it was easy to get him to talk and open up. Yeah. But then we started interviewing uh, uh, Yodkon Po, who's uh, yeah. one of the younger fighters coming up. He's quite quiet, yeah. yeah. And he's, you know, he's, I mean, he's a monster in the ring. You see him in there and he's just, you know, he's a beast. But, you know, when you talk to him, he's so humble and he's, He's very kind of low-key, you know, so it's hard to get him to open up about his life. And, you know, we, we got some footage from him, but, uh, sure. yeah, that was probably the most difficult thing was, was getting someone to just kind of open up on camera. Huh. In the, uh, I guess it's, it's tough because it's like you have a very limited amount of time. And it's like, okay, we're filming now. Go. Yeah. <laughs> a, and, I, you know, I found there's lots of fighters that I've met in the past that, you know, over over a course of meeting them several times they're like you know recognize you and it's like it's okay but right. you're meeting someone like you know ken for instance at like satong pino he's like quiet he's just a quiet dude and it's only yeah. like this past couple times around that i've seen him that he's just like you know s speak more than a few, <laughs> a few yeah. words um is there is there any particular fighter that you felt a connection with that you felt like you got to know anyone you identified with any? Like... Uh, probably the fighters from Sang Water Cop, just because I you know I've been there. That was the third year already, and I spent a lot of time with those guys. Mm. So it was pretty much I would just show up, and then you know they were they would be open to just doing the the video interviews anytime that I wanted. Sure. <clears throat> I think. Uh, Nung Tep from Eminent Air, he was really cool and open about it. I mean, we just showed up and he kind of rolled out of bed and he was he was game right from the right from the beginning. So, but it was I guess a, a lot of things get lost in translation, so it's hard to really. It's like right now I'm still learning, even though I already I already filmed everything when I was when I was in Thailand. It wasn't until I went through the translation process here in America. You're like, oh, that that's I, what I, he's I talking actually, about, right? Because she would just give me the gist of it over there. She'd be like, okay, this is what he kind of said. And then if you have anything else, we could feed off of that. You know, to ask me now. Yeah. But it wasn't until I got back here and started working with my translator here that I really started understanding what they were talking about. So is this, um, obviously, this is subtitled and all of that. Right. Um, what do you, what's the goal of this? What do you want to come of this? Do you, do you, do you want to package this up, sell it? Do you want to give it to the people? I mean, what, what's the goal? What do you want to do? Um, I'm not really looking to to sell it. You know, I don't think, being that I'm so new at this, I don't think that I that I could produce something of quality to put on like a, a TV show or something like that. Uh, okay, <laughs> I disagree, just, but, but I'm very critical, so uh, I feel like I really want to be able to master this before I even try to ask for some sort of like TV deal or something like that. You know, I mean, that's so much. That's so far down the road. It's you know, I'm still trying to build this thing up. So basically, I'm just going to put it out and just let people watch it. You know, I just want people to to learn about what Muay Thai is in Thailand and learn about the culture. And I feel like if I try to charge for it, it's, you know, then it's going to kind of uh, hinder some people from watching it. Sure. So I'll put this one out here. And, and you know, I believe that if, if, if you kind of, if you do something that you love and if you love to do it, it's going to, it'll come back to you down the road. So maybe in, in a form of like sponsorships or something like that, I could, I could kind of make some of it back in the end. Sure. Do you, um, do you have something cooking in the back of your mind? Do you have, do you have further projects you're thinking about? Of course you do. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, next, year, next year, I have something in the works. Good. I don't, I don't want to jinx it yet, but no, it's going to be... All right, we'll leave it alone. We'll leave it alone. Yeah. It, it, it's going to have to do with Muay Thai in Thailand again, but it's going to tackle something else, a different a different subject. So. Okay. Well, um, so what what kind of, what's the release? Like, how are you doing this? I know you originally had, had planned on doing one a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, the process is it's taking a little bit longer than expected. Sure, sure. I mean, so, sure. Uh, and what I'm learning too, with you know, going through the transcripts and everything. I mean, I have a big book of all the transcripts, and I've been learning that you know, you, you kind of let the the story tell itself. You know, if you go through the transcripts, you 
<clears throat> you, you let the story pop out. So right now I'm just kind of taking bits and pieces of different interviews and I'm trying to fit them into a story. So I don't know if I'm going to go with, you know, okay, like, okay, this episode is, is about gambling and this episode is about, you know, the young kids coming up and this episode is about the superstars or if it's going to be focused on, you know, each fighter is a different episode, you know? Mm. I'm not uh, really sure, you know, where sure, this is going to go yet. Sure. What, uh, maybe, maybe we'll put it to, maybe, <coughs> maybe you can put it out there to the, uh, to the folks. Let people vote on it which way they want to go. <laughs> ruin it. I wouldn't leave it to the to us. We might ruin it. Um, so when it okay, we saw we have the trailer. Uh, we're gonna show you the trailer, obviously, um, in this blog post. But when is the first? Do you have an estimate? Can you talk about that when that might happen? I'm hoping to get it done within the month. Okay, awesome. awesome. I'm, we're, I'm working towards it. I'm getting there. It's just I just need to finalize a couple different things and. Well, stop wasting time talking to me <laughs> and get back editing. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like I said, everyone, there's, it's been, you know, um, great reception. It's Everyone seems to be um, buzzing about this. And uh, lots of familiar faces. I saw, you know, Rob's mug up there. saw Abigail. Um, so lots of uh, friendly and familiar faces from the, the Bangkok Muay Thai scene. Well, John... Um, I appreciate your time, and um, we're really uh, we're behind you on this. And uh, uh, if there's anything you know, my Muay Thai could do to help uh, get the word out, you you let us know, and uh, we're definitely behind it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, um, we'll say goodbye right now, and um, we'll we'll. John, can we do this at another time? Can we catch up after, after maybe the the first one comes out? Uh, talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Sounds good. Excellent. Well, my Muay Thai thanks you, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll catch up soon. Okay. Good All talking right. to you. Take care.